this is another all heart video. So let's have some real talk here. All of our little ones at one point or another or every day will go through a lot of different emotions. Sometimes all at once. And what I've learned is that having them understand those emotions is the first step into helping them learn how to cope with all of those different feelings. You know, they may be tiny little humans, but their emotions are anything but tiny. And a lot of times their tantrums, I mean, they're causing you premature aging. I mean, some of these wrinkles are just for my daughter. Like, like this one, I know is for my daughter for sure. So if you want to go from your children doing this no more, to your child doing this, I'm fourth grader. Can you help me, please? Sure, bud. Let's figure it out, okay? Okay. Then please just keep on watching as we discuss the top eight books to aid in your child's emotional development. For more educational content, please make sure to hit that like button, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell to be notified of any future videos. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So the first book that I wanted to talk about is called Little Monkey Calms Down. And this book actually starts off uh, with a little story about how the little monkey drops his ice cream and it covers a lot of different coping mechanisms for dealing with the feelings that the monkey experiences um, after he drops that ice cream cone. So the reason why I really like this book it's because one it's very relatable, two it's also very easy to understand and it's written for younger children to be able to understand and memorize a lot of the information that's in here. So a lot of times, even when I read it to my daughter, she follows along and she knows all of the words. So this book promotes manners, speaking skills, and also animal recognition um, amongst, again, offering a lot of different coping mechanisms for dealing with some of those initial uh, feelings of distress. So the second book on my list is called Scrambled Feelings Expressions. And I really like this book because it came with a set of um, different eggs with all of the expressions um, expressing all of the feelings that you will find in this book. Now, this book is about the journey that these little eggs take um, as they go over to Humpty's birthday party. And it discusses all of the obstacles that they face during that journey and how those obstacles in turn uh, make them feel a certain way. Because it's one thing to say, you know, you're angry, you're happy, you're sad without really knowing what those words mean. So it's nice that in this story, they're able to place those situations and correlate those feelings that are associated with the situation that the little eggs um, go through. That way it makes it easier for your child to identify what feeling they are feeling if they're faced with a similar situation in the future. So again, scrambled feelings, expression. So moving on to book numero tres. This is called In My Heart, A Book of Feelings. This is a beautifully written book and it contains a whole bunch of really nice metaphors and absolutely beautiful, beautiful graphics. And again, just like um, the expression book, it goes through different scenarios, which again are not only relatable, but help in describing and associating those scenarios with those feelings, making it easier for your child to not only relate, but also to identify what feelings they are currently going through. So this book doesn't give any coping mechanisms, but it does a very good job 
of helping your child to identify what emotion they're feeling at that time. For example, this page where it says, when I get really angry, my heart feels as if it's going to explode. Don't come near me. My heart is yelling hot and loud. This is when my heart is mad. So again, very descriptive words, very beautiful colored pictures, and the language is perfect for any, um, any age group, whether they're a toddler or they're a little bit older. So again, this book is called In My Heart, A Book of Feelings. So the fourth book is called So Many Raisins to Be Happy, So Few Raisins to Complain. And this is a very cute and funny read. And as you can tell by the title, a play on words because it should be, you know, so many reasons to be happy, so few reasons to complain. So I really enjoyed this book and, um, it's the perfect book for any age group. And this book focuses on the power of positive thinking. So this is a story about a raisin who starts off his day not feeling quite like himself and is looking at the world around him the way that a person who looks at the glass half empty would. But by using the power of positive thinking, he turns that bad day into a really good day and those bad situations into good situations. So for example, on this page, he's saying that the sunshine is gone and it's raining and that's a reason to be sad. And on this page he says, well, rain makes things clean and green. That's a reason to be glad. So again, he'll go through different scenarios where you know, he's down in the dumps about something, but he takes a different outlook on it. And in turn, you know, it turns that frown upside down. You know, I think it's really important to be able to teach our children to take situations and try and look at the brighter side of them, um, especially when they're very young, because it could be something that could escalate into um, something worse, especially, you know, as they get older. Um, it's very easy to just focus on the negative things surrounding us and it's definitely a lot more difficult to climb out of that mind frame. So um, that book is definitely um, a step in the right direction and it was um, a very fun read for them. And again, it's very relatable and it's a story that I think your kids will enjoy and understand. So let's move on to book number five. Now this book, I think you're a little bit more familiar with. Um, I think it's a book that we actually read, that I actually read growing up. Um, so this is called Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. And it follows the story of Alexander, wakes up on the wrong side of the bed, and throughout his day, his day just gets progressively worse and worse and worse. And because he doesn't have that power of, of looking at life in a positive light, um, you know, he can't get out of that slump. And the funny thing about this book is that he keeps thinking, well, if I lived in Australia, then this wouldn't be happening to me and I wouldn't be having a bad day. But the joke at the end of the book is his mother saying, well, even people in Australia have a bad day. So, I think this book is geared more towards a little bit older children as, you know, the writing is um, a little bit longer, but again, it's a very fun read. It's a very funny read, and um, I think it's a book that, that they'll uh, go ahead and remember. So the sixth book I wanted to mention is called, I Know What to Do When I'm Feeling. So this book does exactly what the title describes. It is the perfect book for describing different coping mechanisms for each of the feelings. Now, this book doesn't go ahead and outline situations or describe what the feelings are. So I would say this book is geared more towards children that understand each of the different feelings and then go ahead and progress to learning different coping strategies for those feelings, such as this one. 
angry. So as you can see, it has very, very nice, clear graphics. Obviously, we know that this little guy is very angry. And if you turn the book upside down, it says, when I feel angry, you know, and here are the different coping mechanisms like, I can count to 10, I can talk to a friend or an adult, I can walk away, I can take a deep breath, I can ask them to stop, I can go do something I enjoy. So it has a lot of different coping strategies, perfect for children of all ages. And um, again, it's called, I know what to do when I am feeling. So the seventh book is called, What Should Danny Do? And this is newer to our collection, but it has quickly grown into one of my children's favorite. So this story follows along this little boy here, his name is Danny. And this book focuses on the power to choose. So he's confronted with different situations and at the bottom of, that, of um, each of the pages, it gives your child, your son or your daughter, the power to choose what Danny should do. So one of the choices is always positive and one of the other choices is negative. And all of those lead to consequences. So it teaches your child that there are consequences to the decisions that they make especially when they take those choices um, because of whatever that they are feeling. So I think it's so incredibly important to, again, teach our children about how important their choices are and how their choices can have a, lot, uh, a lasting impact on you know, on their friends, on their family, and on themselves. So that's not to say that we don't sometimes make the wrong choice, especially when we are, you know, led by our emotions. So being able to identify these feelings and then give our children the necessary tools to be able to cope with these feelings to much better outcomes. I think this book is perfect for any age group, including adults. And um, it's so creatively written. Um, I know that your family is really going to enjoy this one. So the final book is called Dear Girl. And the reason why I left this one to last is because it's a little bit different than, you know, identifying different emotions. This is more about embracing who you are as a girl, your differences, your emotions, your hormones, all of the things that make you beautiful. And it really teaches you how to love yourself for who you are. The girls in this book come in all different shapes, sizes. Some are tall, some are short, some are from different cultural backgrounds, some like to dress differently. And this book really describes how, you know, that's okay. It's okay to be different. It's okay to not look like the other person. And if anything, it's such a beautiful thing to be able to embrace um, who you are and you know what you look like all of your physical features and you know it's so important for for our children to grow up feeling you know unconditionally loved and having them feel like they are you know supported and that you are always there for them how our children see themselves can affect their lives in so many ways and it has a, di a direct correlation with their emotions and in turn how they project those emotions into the world so this book ties really nicely with the rest of the books because not only does it describe you know the emotions that girls go through um but also like i mentioned before um body acceptance. So I hope this video, um, you know, gave you a little bit more information as far as um, what types of books are out there for you and your family. Um, these are my top eight recommendations and I can tell you from experience that all of these have helped in aiding the emotional development of my children in one way or another. So if you gained some useful information and tips in uh, this video, please make sure to hit that like button, make sure to subscribe, and make sure to hit that notification bell to, again, be notified of any future videos. For the entire month of September, I will be 
um, basing my videos on educational content and I will have a few other videos kind of sprinkled in there. I do try and upload two or three videos a week. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, please uh, write them down below. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and end our video and I will go ahead and see you guys very soon. Thanks again. Bye.